Shoot your arrows. Cooper Cup plucks it out of the air and gives the Rams the lead. Robert Wood, touchdown. LA. Goff goes crashing into the end zone. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. Picked off. Marcus Peters. Coming off the edge. And Ryan will be wrapped up by Clay Matthews. Everett in stride. Wow. Franklin Myers gets his hand down there. Reno got a hand on it. Did he pick it? He did! Racing down the sideline is a key to lead. Gurley for MVP! Touchdown LA! Picked off by John Johnson. Well, Dante Fowler, who is able to get to breathe. Greg Zerline sends the Rams to the Super Bowl! Oh! LA wow. will play for the Lombardi! Welcome back, guys, to another Downtown Rams podcast. It's episode 185, and it's another draft season podcast. Of course, before we get into it, if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe and review on iTunes. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. Joining me is Alexis Kraft, and we got two very talented um, offensive prospects. We have Kareth White Jr., and he is from Florida Atlantic. And we also have Emmanuel Butler from Northern Arizona, the wide receiver. He was at the Combine. Kareth White met with the Rams. So here are those two fun interviews. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys. Joining the show, we have Florida Atlantic running back Kareth White Jr. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. It's going well. I, I'm, it's a pleasure being on here. Thank you guys for having me. I'm just blessed for this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. We're excited to get talking to you and to kick it off. You know, how old were you when you started playing football and kind of how did that story come to be? How did you get into the game? Well, honestly, um, I started playing football at six years old. So to tell a little bit about my story, um, I have an older sister who's currently 26. And when I was growing up, she played basketball. So I remember telling my mom, like, hey, I want to play basketball. So, you know, she took me to the recreational center for asylums um, for basketball. And then when we got there, um, the lady at the desk said, um, you're too late. The asylums are over. What we do have available is flag football. My mom was like, you want to play flag football? I was like, mom, I really want to play basketball. Even my older sister played basketball. I really looked up to her. And she was like, well, it's only flag football. And I was like, you know what, I'll try it. So, you know, that's how kind of how it, it all got started. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. You know, it's we always love kind of finding out, you know, the origin of everyone's football story. Uh, but with that being said, I'm sure you watched, uh, you know, a lot of NFL growing up. Um, who is your favorite NFL player, would you say? My favorite NFL player. Man, that's a tough one, man. So many great players. I mean... Honestly, growing up, I honestly watched uh, Reggie Bush a lot when he was at USC in those in his college days. I actually watched him a lot, and that's how I kind of learned football for myself. To be to be honest, um, just through watching him and stuff like that, and he was one of the one of the greatest college players ever. He asked me, so I mean, it's kind of hard to label you know one person who's my all time favorite. You know, there's so many greats. It's kind of just hard to limit to one person. <laughs> For sure. You know, there's definitely a lot of people to pick from. And Reggie Bush, as you mentioned, definitely was a fun guy to watch, uh, both in college and uh, in his professional career as well. But, you know, yeah, you well, say, I agree. Yeah. And you, you grew up and played football and then it t- came time for you to play in college. What made you choose uh, Florida Atlantic? I mean, uh, honestly, uh, FAU was my only offer. So that's why I'll forever be grateful to the um university um to make a long story short how i got that offer um i remember like prior the fau holds a uh, camp every year and one one month prior to that camp my high school football coach told me hey Kara, you should go to the uh, fau's camp that's coming up next month and i was like all right so you know time goes by and um i'm out with my time goes by and the day before the camp i, I totally forget about the camp but I'm out with my girlfriend, you know, we're out eating dinner. It's her birthday. We're out eating, eating dinner and celebrating with her family. And, you know, at this time, I didn't have a phone due to, because, like, the screen was cracked, so, so I was going to repair it. So my mom texted my um, girl's phone saying, like, hey, you should come home. So, you know, I go home, and, you know, so I get home. I um get my mom's phone and call my girl back, you know, just reflecting on her, 
basically her life. You know, she's uh, she turned, I think, was 17 then or however that was. And um, so I ended up going to sleep very late that night. And so the next day is the day of FAU camp, which I totally forget about. And my mom received a text from my coach saying, hey, Kareth, are you still going to that camp? So my mom wakes me up saying, hey, why didn't you tell me um, there's an FAU camp? I was like, oh, man, I forgot. And she's like, you should go. I was like, mom, I'm really tired. She's like, no, you need to go. So, you know, I ended up going to the camp. I ended up running the fastest 40 there. And then, like, three days later, um, three days later, the coach, um, the co- uh, Coach Partridge, who was a former uh, FAU coach, uh, called me saying, hey, Kara, do we like to offer you a scholarship? And I remember just saying, I commit right on the spot. And he was like, wait, what? You don't want to talk about it with your family? I was like, no, trust me. They'll be very happy about this. So that's how, long story short, that's how I got to FAU. <laughs> that's a phenomenal story right there. I absolutely love that. Um, you know, I think that's really cool. And, uh, you know, obviously I, I think it's kind of a funny story that you'll look back on, you know, even when your, you know, NFL career is over or, you know, even just you, you're done, re- you know, with any work, you know, that is, and you're just retired or you'll always remember that. So, you know, once again, yeah. you know, uh, mother knows best type of thing. <laughs> All right, man. I just, oh, 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 to God, man. You know, he just made a way and stuff like that. So I'm very appreciative how everything played out yeah of course and um you know i want to ask you because you know at fau um whether or not you know he recruited you lane kiffin ended up going there and you, you know you mentioned uh reggie bush so obviously he has some usc ties lane kiffin has usc ties um i have watched a lot of usc in my day so uh, it was pretty cool to see him go over to fau and obviously he and of course yourself and um your teammates had a lot of success there um you know what was it like playing for lane kiffin uh, lane kiffin was a uh... A, a great, uh, great coach. You know, he's an offensive guru, so you know he knows his football. And, you know, he just um helps the team and sets them up, sets them up for uh, success. You know, he um, formulates a great game plan. And, you know, just help us execute um week in week out. So you know, um, Kiffin's a great guy. You know, I'm very appreciative of, of him. Absolutely, and you redshirted your first year there, and that's something I kind of want to touch on because um, I played soccer in college and I redshirted my first year as well so I always like to you know ask guys what was that experience like for you because I know it can be different for everybody but uh what was your redshirt experience like um I would say my redshirt experience was actually great you know um helped me get um I had time that I used that year you know to get acclimated to college life and you know just really learn the ins and outs of how everything works you know I feel like doing that I kind of got ahead of the game and stuff like that which you know helped me further my success for the future and stuff like that. So, I mean, I wouldn't change a thing. I think that great shirt year um, it helped me grow as a person, man, and everything. So, you know, it just really helped me out for my, my future, if you ask me. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely, a, you know, a positive way to look at it. I think redshirting uh, more often than not is the right move. Um, but, you know, with that being said, you know, how would you describe your overall college football career? I mean, I'll, it's something I'll never forget. Um, just like how I told you how I got that offer, you know, just I don't know if that influenced my how I feel about my college career, but you know, I'll forever be grateful, you know, to the university, you know, just allowing me to have an opportunity, you know, to even play ball for another uh, four years. So, you know, I, I'll just, you know, just my experience at FAU has been amazing. You know, the people around them here in Boca, you know, to the teachers, to the coaching staff, you know, everything's just been great. Yeah, and I know it's probably hard to pick, but do you have a favorite moment or a favorite play or a favorite game that you played in during your college career? Um, I'll say my favorite moment uh, is when I um, when I was the first one in school history to return a kick kick return for a touchdown. Um, that's one of my favorite moments. Cause I remember praying about it, and I was just like, man, and you know, God actually came through for me. So you know, it's just I was just. It was just one of those special moments, you know, you always thought about and prayed about, and it actually happened. So it's something I'll never forget. Yeah, that obviously must have been a huge moment for you. Obviously, you know, returning is a different game in itself, and it's not for everybody, um, but you're definitely very good in that area. Um, you know, obviously, you went up against some top notch competition. Who was the toughest player uh, that stands out to you that you went up against in college? Um. 
No, there's a lot of um, great players we played against. Um, again, to pick out one person, uh, it was kind of hard hard to say, to be quite, to be honest. But um, we played against a lot of great players, a lot of great teams. So, um, you know, it's, just, it's kind of hard to pinpoint. <laughs> yeah, and uh, something that I kind of want to touch on as well is, you know, you're going into the draft with actually a fellow teammate of yours who's also running back, uh, Devin Singletary. Um, what is that like, you know, kind of getting to experience this draft process with him? And do you guys talk about it or work out together? Or is it kind of nice to have um, someone in your boat going through the same things that you're going through? I mean, I feel like it's amazing. Um, you know, that running back room, you know, it was something special. You know, Coach Coach Smith, you know, we always a uh, we're all a, a tight unit, you know, each day in practice, we push each other hard, you know, just to um, make each other uh, better. We try to push each other to new levels to just to bring, ultimately bring the best out of us. So, you know, just to be going through this process, you know, through the draft, you know, training, it's just very special, you know, just, you know, we all, we work together. So, you know, we're, we're brothers. We may have different parents, you know, we're not biological, but then we're brothers, man. So, you know, just, it's just very special to see how, you know, how things are playing out right now. So, you know, we just continue to work hard and see what God has in plan for us. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And, you know, you guys are a pretty good duo there. Um, you know, I want to ask you how your pro day was because, you know, that's kind of how you came up on our radar. Um, there were a lot of, you know, different media uh, personnel that were talking about you for all different teams, um, including the Rams, which, of course, were a Rams podcast. So, uh, you know, what was that whole pro day experience like for you? Um, pro day, um, it was an experience of a lifetime, you know. I've been training for, you know, two and a half months almost. And, you know, just we were working hard. I was working down at Fit Speed, and it's a great organization now. They're great coaching, great coaching staff they have down there. And, you know, and just to know, um, just to know that, you know, all your hard work and praise and everything that you do, you know, it just it does pay off. You know, you just got to stay consistent and stay the course. So, you know, just to know that everything went well, I'm very thankful. You know, just to even be this far for the and you know, just be this far and the opportunity that I was given to go out there perform, I'm very thankful. So I'm just happy how things played out. You know, I wouldn't change a thing, you know, just from you know, waking up early mornings, late nights to just, you know, preparing myself for that day. Yeah, of course. And someone that you mentioned earlier uh in the show was Reggie Bush. But I'm curious, is there any running back that you modeled your game after? Um you know, I watch a lot of film on different guys. I try to, you know, take, you know, some attributes and some, you know, some skills from the other players have. Um, I often get that, you know, people, I often remind people of Alvin Kamara, you know, just kind of one cut and go, you know, explosive type player. But um, I actually you not know, try to um, just add different things to my repertoire, you know, from different players and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily one person I, you know, try to model my game after, but, you know, I just try to soak in all the knowledge and, well, some information I can from everybody. Yeah, and Karis, what do you feel you bring to the table that no other running back in this draft brings? Um, it's trying to be a game changer. You know, you, um, I think I've been blessed with speed, you know, God gave me speed. So, you know, just try to use that to my advantage, you know, just be a game changer, go on a game, you know, just change the pace, have long speed, and, you know, just make big plays. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it was, is that something that you consider to be your biggest strength, or what would you consider your biggest strength as a running back to be? Uh, biggest strength, you know, just like I mentioned before, speed and be able to catch and just and be able to play, you know, be versatile and be able to play multiple positions, you know, whether it's a uh, receiver, you know, special teams, kick return, kick off, whatever it may be, just be able to be uh, versatile and limited, limited to um, one position. So I feel like that's a very effective and you know, skilled tool that I can use in my advantage, you know, not just not to be limited to one position. Oh yeah, you know, certainly and um I, I kinda wanna ask you, you know, a question because we don't get, you know, a lot of kick returners on here, um quite the caliber of you. Um so I just wanna ask you, you know, what goes into, you know, kick returning and even, you know, putt returning. Like how is that whole experience because I mean it, it seems kind of crazy like for instance you're kind of looking up waiting for this ball to come in your hands and you look down and everyone's running at you so it's you know it must be a little yeah. different than you know just being a running back obviously right it's you know a different um aspect of the game you know then we every, every day you got to catch kicks you know just to get familiar so just 
becomes natural. Nothing, nothing new, nothing off. So you know, just it's a uh, it's a collective unit. You know, you can't do it by yourself. So you need your uh, other the ten members of the team to do their job and stuff like that. So, and that's why when you score, you know, it's just a special moment because you know, like collectively, collectively as a unit, we all did our job. We all did our assignment. So you know, that's what makes it special. So, but as far as you know, kick, I mean, kick return or punt return, you know, just catching the ball and you know, just trusting. Trust your training, you know, just do what you got to do and just be a football player. Absolutely. And, you know, everyone who comes on our show, we like to ask sometimes just kind of fun questions just to get to know the player a little bit. But what uh, player do you most want to juke in the NFL? If you had to pick one. If I had a juke, oh, man. I mean, there's many players, you know, just – Growing up, there's so many players, you know, growing up you, growing up watching and just to know that you'll be playing against them, that's kind of unique and special in a way. Um, if I had to pick one person, I would like to juke. Oh, man, I'm trying to think. It's not going to come up to my head, <laughs> quite honest. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. You know, so funny. It's like right after I get off, I'm going to think of a person. But, you know, as of right now, I can't think of a person right now. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I hear you there. And of course, you know, the question isn't like, you know, just like kind of skip by somebody like talking about just completely, you know, making someone look silly. You know, that's kind of, you know, what it is. But of course, if you answer that, then you kind of have, a you know, an X on your back. Do you not? I mean, (laughs) you know, it's kind of, you know, so... (laughs) <laughs> it, it's tough. We 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 always ask those uh, those fun questions. Uh, defensive guys always say, "I want to sack Tom Brady or I want to pick off Tom Brady." So that's always right. kind of like yeah. a unanimous answer. But it's always fun, you know, talking to offensive players because you don't know who they're going to say as far as who do I want to juke, who do I want to catch the football from, um, right? You know, exactly stuff like that. Um, you know, but w- with that being said, um, we are a Rams podcast, as we've mentioned. Uh, so. You know, obviously, we know that you visited with the Rams. Uh, it was reported that you actually had a private visit with the Rams, uh, one of the um, allotted 30 that are given to a team. What was that experience like uh, visiting the Rams? How do you think that went for you? Um, the experience was very cool. You know, it was my first time actually out in LA, out in California. So, I mean, it was just cool, you know, to be on a different side of the country. Um, you know, and just to you know, view the facility, talk to the different coaches and stuff like that, get my share, and they get my share. So it was just one of the experience, you know, I'll be um very grateful of and you know, we'll see how things play out when the draft comes up. So you never know. Of course, and I, we would love to see you end up a Los Angeles Ram, but we'll be fans of you no matter where you go and uh you know, we're very impressed and we think very highly of you and uh you're going to be exciting to follow in your career. That's for sure. But, you know, to wrap it up, uh, who in your own words is Kareth White as a player and who is he as a person? As a player, um, I would say I'm, I'm very hardworking as a player and as a person, just very hardworking and very dedicated and consistent. Um, and as a player, you know, I gave everything I got, you know, like football, football is like my brother, man. I, I've been, football has been with me with me since I was six years old. So it's kind of like all I know. So, you know, I have, I have very, have a lot of passion and love for the game. So it, 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 I give it everything I got. Um, as a person, um, I'm very loving and caring. I'm a family oriented person. Um, I love my family and friends. And I try to make sure everyone's okay. You know, I, oftentimes I put others before myself to be quite frank, not all the time. Um, I love to sing. <laughs> Um, I'm a homebody. I love to sing, watch movies and stuff like that. And, you know, I just, I just try to be the positive light in the world that we need in today's world. So I just you know, try to um, be positive and encourage others to, you know, to do the same and stuff like that. So I guess that's a little, you know, information about me. <laughs> that's awesome, man. It's total blast getting to talk with you. Um, you know, obviously, I, I wish you and, of course, Alexis, you know, we wish you the best of luck uh, moving forward. Um, we do mean that when we say, you know, we root for anybody that comes on here, regardless of what helmet you wear. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously, we want you to stay healthy. Um, we want you to get as drafted as high as possible. But, of course, we want you to go to the right team, have that right fit, whether it's the Rams, whether it's, you know, any team. And, of course, uh, we always love to stay in touch. So, um, you, you know, that's pretty much it, man. You know, we really appreciate you coming on. No, thank you. I really appreciate you guys. It was my pleasure. 
All right, guys. Joining us on the podcast, we have Northern Arizona wide receiver Emmanuel Butler. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. How's it going? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, of course. We're so excited to talk to you and, you know, hear about you and your story. And just to start it off, I guess, can you tell us, um, you know, how you started playing football and how old you were when that happened? Yeah, most definitely. Um, it was somewhere I was six years old and on my six year old birthday, um, my dad asked me whether I wanted to get a mini motorcycle, which it was a bike, but at the time I called it a mini motorcycle and um, whether or not I wanted to get that or whether or not I wanted to play football. And I ended up choosing football. Um, thank God I did because it ended up being being a great decision in the end. <laughs> that, that is such an awesome story. I I love that. Um, you know, growing up, was there a favorite player that you really admired? Yeah, honestly, I had I had a whole bunch of favorite players, and I just loved the game of football um, since a very young age. Uh, I looked up to a lot of guys like Terrell Owens. I really I was a really big uh, big Eagles fan growing up, so um, I loved a lot of the Eagles players. I'm even gonna have Terrell Owens, um, Brian Westbrook. Um, I looked up to a lot of those guys. I looked up to Randy Moss, of course, um, players like that. But I looked up to a lot of different players um, and tried to try to take uh, take what they did on the field and, and do it myself. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you played your college career at Northern Arizona. What made you choose uh, Northern Arizona to play at? Well, well honestly, um, coming out of high school, Northern Arizona was the only team that that took the opportunity. I mean, that gave me an opportunity to play to play college football for uh, for free while while earning education. So they were the only team team to um, offer me a scholarship. I went up there for a seven on seven tournament my senior year. I didn't have any scholarship offers, and we had another star receiver on our team. Uh, his name was Jalen Brown. He was like a five star guy. Um, had every offer. A great player. Um, great guy. Um, and, you know, I kind of got overlooked a little bit because, you know, he, he was receiving, you know, most of the attention and stuff like that. And so I went up to Northern Arizona for a passing league tournament and Jalen was actually hurt. So I got to go on the outside and showcase a little bit of what I could do on the outside. And they loved me. And Coach Gangarello, who's um, now the OC for the Denver Broncos, and um, Coach Tim Plow, who's now the OC at University of California, Davis, um, they they were the people that recruited me. They offered me a scholarship, um, and after that, it was history. Well, that's fantastic, and you know it's really cool. You know, you mentioned the OC of the the Broncos, and of course the OC of uh, you know UC Davis. I mean, that's really cool. You know, seeing you know coaches that were there for you, and then of course you know they kind of move on, and you know it's kind of all you know really the process of this whole business. You know, you see guys, it's kind of like a stock game, and um, you know your stock's rising. You know, um, with that being said, you know what would you say is the the toughest player you went up against in college? The toughest player I went up against, I would say, I, I would have to, I would have to break it down. Uh, it would have to be three players. Um, it would have to either be Marcus Alford, who um, was a defensive back there when I was a sophomore. <clears throat> he was a great player. Uh, very, he was a very fast player. Um, either him, Wes Sutton, who was there with me throughout my entirety, uh, throughout my the entirety of my career. Um, he's a great defensive back as well. Um, or it will be Taron Johnson that um, he went to Weber State, and he's now he I believe he got drafted in the fourth round. He plays on the Buffalo Bills now. Um, he was a great player as well. Um, so uh, those three guys would definitely be the toughest players that I went up against in college. Yeah, and um, it's probably hard to pick just one, but do you have a favorite memory or a favorite play or even a favorite game from your college career? My favorite game. Mm, I definitely have a favorite menu, uh, a favorite memory. I feel like my favorite memory would be <clears throat> the catch that I had against Arizona State, the one hand catch that I had because it was in my hometown uh, and it was a pretty big play. And I feel like my favorite game, I'd have to say, the first game of the season, my sophomore career against Stephen F. Austin, it was kind of my breakout game that put me on the map. I had three touchdowns and went over like I think I had over 200 yards or something like that. And I had a really good game that game, and it kind of kind of put me on the radar. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, you know, your 2017 campaign, you, you ended up suffering a, a season-ending uh, shoulder injury. 
two games in. Um, you know, really unfortunate experience. But, you know, what was that experience like for you, and how do you feel, you know, kind of you, you were able to learn from it? I feel like that was – honestly, that was a life-changing experience for me. Somewhere. I've, I've been playing football my entire life, so I, I've never had it taken away from me. Um, so that at that time, you know, it was it was, it was a very it was a very rough time for me to go through. It was very challenging to have to go to practice and, and watch my teammates practice and not be able to practice. To have to go to the games and watch my teammates play and not be able to go out and help them win. Um, it was very rough to do that. It was very challenging, but I feel like it, it definitely made me a stronger person. Um, and and now that I've gone through it, um, I'm so happy that I had to go through that. That I had to go through that injury. And, and overcome that because it taught me so much um, about myself as a person and as a football player. And it, it, it definitely made me mature. Oh, for sure. You know, um, as a collegiate athlete myself, I uh, went through um, a season ending injury as well. And I really look back on that experience and I, you know, just think about how much that it taught me as well. And it really, uh, you know, shows you what you can overcome and what you can do and uh, teaches you valuable life lessons for sure. But you know, um, another thing is I myself also went to um, a smaller school, 